In the previous video, you added a countdown timer in a method to set up the game. Your initial game screen looks just as it should, but the timer still does not count down. Here's what's happening. When you set up a countdown timer in Reset Game, you didn't actually tell the timer to start. You can't start the timer till the Hit Me button is tapped for the first time. But once it is tapped for the first time, you don't want to start or rather restart the timer again each time the button is tapped. And that's why you needed the game started flag. You want to only start the timer once when the hit me button is tapped for the very first time after a call to reset game. But the hit me button only calls the increment score method. Let's find a way to handle this. An easy solution would be to add the following code to the top of increment score. The if syntax is used to evaluate a statement which returns a logical value, and if the return value is true, the code within the if block is executed. Also, there can be an else clause which is executed if the logical value is false. In summation, the code checks if the game has started. If it hasn't, it starts the timer and updates the flag to indicate that the game has now started. However, this way of starting the game is tangled with the code for incrementing the score. What would happen if we wanted to start the game from somewhere else? For example, a new button that we added to the game later. Let's remove the code now and add the following cleaner approach. The code is basically the same as what we added within the if condition originally. So we can simply call this new method from within the if condition. Add this new code to the top of increment score. Now your countdown timer is ticking merrily away. T minus 60 seconds and counting to do uh, what exactly? The answer is nothing because the game doesn't know what to do after 60 seconds when the game ends. How about if we display a message at the end of the game to show the score when the timer completes? Displaying a message is simple enough since you can make use of the toast class in Android. This class is used to display an on-screen message. The nice thing about this message is that it automatically disappears once it after a timeout. Being that we're presenting some text to the user, we should probably create a string resource for the new text. Remember, this is always a good thing to do. If you're going to add some new text in your Android app that will be visible to the user, then create a string resource. You will thank me later when you have to translate your app to another language or if you have to change the actual string value. Since this is not a string that is added via the layout editor, you will need to add the string resource directly to the string resource file. Okay, here I have my project open. Next, I open the strings.xml file. You can find this in app, res, and values folder. Add the following line. Okay, that gives you a string resource to display but how and where do we actually display the string? In main activity, let's add a new method. First, let's call make text on the toast object. By selecting this method from the code completion, Android Studio automatically adds the import method for the toast class. You pass the activity that you want the toast to appear on, the message to display, and a duration for displaying the message to the toast. The duration is a constant value defined by the system, and it can be either short or long. We opt for the long duration. After that, you simply reset the game so that the player can play another game. 
We now have a method to execute at the end of the game, but where do we call it from? Remember how the countdown timer had a stub for on finish? That's where you'll call the end game method. Add the call to end game to on finish. Now run the app and keep tapping the button. The countdown timer will continue to decrement until it hits zero. Once it does, you'll see your toast with your score and game over message, at which point the game will reset. Sometimes it helps to have shorter test periods. All you need to do is modify the initial countdown variable and set it to 5000. Just remember that when you finish, make sure to set it back to 60000.